Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we are going to review the sci-fi original series, The Ark. <laughs> and this is a show that we wanted to review because we felt like we just needed an episode where we just complained relentlessly about a horrible show. Terrible. For the whole time. Because there's, there really is very little redeeming about this series. Let, uh, let me tell you what I told Bob yeah. on the phone this afternoon. In every way you could measure a show, <laughs> this show fails. It, it pretty much the writing, well, the acting, the sets, the color palette, the lighting, the everything. The characters. And every every the computer on the wrist. Everything <laughs> that the actors tried to convey was ham hockey to the ninth degree. Mm. Like when they're trying to like when when a character is trying to to be squirrely and be like, oh, are you, am I a good guy or am I a bad guy? They literally are directing the actors to do crazy things with their eyes. It's murder, she wrote. Level. It is. Oh, yeah. God. It's a soap opera. It's a goddamn soap opera. It's now, terrible. Now, Dean Devlin and Jonathan Glasner, these guys are responsible for Stargate the movie and Stargate SG-1, the series that I loved. And then they it's got into my, a car accident and got concussions my, and wrote this show. I mean, Stargate SG-1 is a wonderful, wonderful series. I'm going to watch it for a third time at some point. It, it's fantastic. I can't understand how they are responsible for this. What I, happened? I, I would rather what watch. What is going on? I would rather watch Space 1999 backwards than watch wow, this show. Wow, that's saying something. This, this show was oh. so bad. After watching the first episode, and I'm alone, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm all alone. I'm not sitting in a room with other people being yeah. able to you know, talk about the experience. I'm literally going, oh, my God. Uh, it's so bad. I can't believe it. Like it was, it was right, so let's, bad. Let's get to some details. So All let's right. start with the science. Cause the this, science. Is, this is the thing that slaps you in the face. Um, I mean, I like the overall premise there, the ship, there's an arc ship, one, the first of many arc ships, hundred years in the future. Yeah. Sometime in the future. They make it specifically say yeah, about a hundred. They yeah. shouldn't have done that. They should have left it more, uh, more open ended. Um, hundred years in the future. We're fleeing earth because we destroyed the environment. We have to go to a new planet. Okay. That's a bit of a shaky premise. Like, cause you know, isn't no matter how much we destroy the earth, it's still going to be far better than any planet we could get to in our neighborhood of the galaxy. Exactly. But anyway, put that aside. Okay. We'll give them that premise. I, you know, the ship is a sublight ship, so it's taking years to get to Proxima Centauri, although they said, what, five years? And Proxima Centauri is like four light years away. So they're going, they're booking. I think they were saying four. four no, I thought it was five. So, so they they're calculated almost, out, like they're, oh, they're averaging like 80% of the speed. Oh, yeah, they're right, like right. ultra relativistic. Okay. But whatever. For sure. That's okay. not happening in 100 years, by the way, but go ahead. Yeah, so so they have well, few. Well, that's a gimme. That's a gimme, and that's fine. They have that's fusion fine. engines. They have some kind they of. Don't they don't specify really. There's some kind of nuclear engines. But the big fusion. mistake that they made, right? The big mistake was 100 of them. But the first one, I mean, the first one that you encounter is that, so what happens is, they have oh, yeah, all these, okay. they have, you know, the, the ship is a rotating ship. So they have all these, these, uh, cryogenic pods, pods that people yeah. are, people are in, you know, it's suspended animation in which I hate. Yeah. And they took all the adults and, re and moved them into one area and they took all the, the teenagers and moved them into another area. So well, when yeah. the ship got damaged, all the adults got killed. Every single senior officer on the ship. Yeah. was in the same pod. They all got killed with one accident. So it's, it's, and they give no reason for it. It was just stupidity. Yeah. It's like here, the whole world got together and planned this arc and invested, you know, whatever resources we have left in this, this project. And no one thought to say, you know what, we should probably spread out the senior officers yeah, yeah. into different locations and again like you know if there's something contrived like that on a show you could sort of give it one sort of contrivance like that but this is the whole show yeah it is and like, did, like the right out of the gate right out of the gate they hit you with that and you're thinking that doesn't make any sense okay whatever but then it just keeps happening and happening Could i describe the, the, the my favorite Go ahead. screw up i mean apparently they've got no science advisor they're apparently. traveling they're traveling from Earth from the sun area, our solar system, to the closest solar system, right? The closest the star. The closest star to the Earth. Proxima Centauri, <laughs> the closest one. And they're like, you know, three quarters of the way there, yeah. and they need fuel. Look, there's a binary yellow star system over there. No, there isn't. Let's go to the planet that's in orbit. Now, wait a second. There's a G. I, I looked up a yellow binary. That's like a G star, kind of like Earth. 
the same like mass of the Earth that w somehow we missed. So we missed a star between us and the closest star. They're, so we they're, missed that. They're that, making that, up. They're making up astronomical situations. It, th that's mm. not the level. I know it's 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 astronomy. And how many people know that Proxima Centauri? I don't I mean, care. It's in the name. It's like right. <laughs> it's like it's like <laughs> flying through the solar system and finding a new planet that we haven't discovered. Yeah. That's that's almost at the level we're talking so about. It's, that it's, is pathetically it's, it's, egregious. It's worse than not having a science advisor. It's scientifically illiterate. It's oh, like yeah. there's nobody involved with that show who has the slightest clue about astronomy or space travel or the the structure of the universe. It's so far worse than that, Bob. Though it's so much worse than that. So first I, I, of all, I got more examples. We have no <laughs> idea. We have like at no point are you oriented to what's happening. They're treating these the engines as if like when the engines are off, the ship stops going. Right. <laughs> you it's know? like a boat. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, no, that, that that's okay if you're making a warp bubble. I get that. You make a warp bubble and you travel and you, the warp bubble goes down and you stop. Okay, like like the, like this, the Enterprise. I get that. But that's not what's happening. They have engines that are like accelerating the ship, but they're treating it as like a car, you know? Like you can, you take your head, your foot off the accelerator and you come to a stop and you could just turn around and go in different directions. It's like it, it took you years to get up to to the speed that you were going. Or whatever, like we don't even know. I mean, again, assuming they're traveling as fast as they're they're traveling, they must have been accelerating the whole time to maintain. They, like, they right, don't so that, go into that level of detail. I know they don't. Then they they sh they should have been turned around by this point, and they should be decelerating. They need to match the speed, the relative vector of Proxima Centauri, if that's where they're going. Forget about orbital mechanics. That's like that's like. So yeah. many layer, you know, layers away from where they are. They're just treating as if they could just go places. Like there's no momentum. There's, you know what I mean? There's no. It, it makes absolutely no sense. But worse than the planet, and they, you know, you may think, how could something be worse than encountering an unknown solar system on the way to the closest solar system? <laughs> right. But they, it's, it, it's everything though. Every single thing that they did, they got wrong. It's incoherent. Like, so, wait. So the thing uh, is spinning. Yeah. The thing is spinning, yeah. right? And then something gets wedged in there. And they're not spinning anymore, which means that there's no, there's no, you know, quote unquote gravity. Assuming there's yeah. no acceleration on the ship, the engines are off. Yeah. Right. So then everyone starts floating around, mm -hmm. and then it starts spinning again. Now, what would have happened? And and I'm not a physicist, but I know enough about science to know what would have happened if that thing started spinning again with all these objects in there that were just floating around. They wouldn't all of a Crash. sudden. They wouldn't go to the exterior part of it like there's real gravity. They would have been swept along the side of that mm -hmm. thing. Like even even a simple thing like that, like doesn't make any sense. Like they're it's they, not artificial gravity. No, it's, it's not yeah. artificial gravity. It's it's it, momentum. It's it's rotation. It's rotation. Yeah. Here's the best example. They're outside the ship in the space suits, suits, and and somebody gets hit by a flying object that breaks off the ship. So this guy. So here's the guy untethered, moving in this direction. So this guy's like, I'm going to save him. So he, he gives a burst to his jetpack and he goes up to grab him. And this is what happens. He grabs him and then, oh, uh, then he goes down. Wait a second. Uh, zero G doesn't work that yeah. way. Oh he would have been, sw I mean, it's, right, it reminds right. me of Expanse. And where there were, gravity was actually like a character, character in the show, a character. Yeah. It, the best comparison to this show is like, all right, oh, how bad is it? This is like such a Saturday morning fluff sci-fi compared to the first season of Expanse. Mm -hmm. There's no aliens. There's just like ships and it's very local and all that stuff. You cannot make any comparison between this show and The Expanse, which is a real sci-fi show. This is such drivel. What, what is that? What would you call this? I don't even want to call this science fiction. It's so bad. It's, 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 we got to come up with a word for, I don't know. for like, it was you such think a about that. Sci-fi right, right. soap opera. Here's one of the things that I thought was the most insulting to me. So it's the comet episode. So again, oh, God. where are they? Yeah. Where are they in relationship to the Oort cloud of, the, of Proxima Centauri? And so they, they run into a comet, right? Out there, wherever in space, cause they're in space, whatever that means. And what direction is the comet going in? You know, so they need to get water from the comet as it passes by, right? Again, they're, they, they should be traveling at about 80% the speed of light at this point. But let's put that aside and say that they, when they turn their engines off, and they, luckily, like, they're they always, slow down. They're always flying their ship by something. 
Yeah, but space is so freaking huge. I know, right? The odds, the odds of, of, of like coming anywhere near. Then th- here's the thing: they have to change their course to intercept the comet a little bit. You can't just change your course anyway. <laughs> You're not like, flying in the atmosphere. Oh my yeah, God. yeah. Just like you can't just turn. So they they get to the comet. So they're gonna as they're passing by the comet. Get this: they're passing yeah. by the comet. They send their shuttle out to hook. A tube up to the comet to hook a tube up to the comet to yeah. drain off the water, but they're only going to have a few minutes. Now you would think that the way that would work is they sort of shoot it out here and then they drain it as it passes by and then disconnect sure. at the other end. Right? How that else would kind of make it? basic sense? But I don't know what was happening. But they kind of attach to the comet. And it's taut from the beginning, and it's like straining the whole time until they had to disconnect. What was happening that whole time? Oh it was God. straining. Are you telling me like, that that was? I mean, that that connection was holding the momentum of the ship and this comet, and 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 then keeping them from. I don't know. I mean, it makes no, no physical. Nobody sense. thought I about it. I can't even make sense of it. It's like it's so nonsensical. It I can't even wrap it's my like, head it's around like it. It's like Saturday morning cartoon level stuff. It's cartoon it's level. It and is. Did, did, and the comet had a tail, right? Yeah, of course, because it, it was a comet. But but would it have a tail if no. it wasn't near a sun? No, it, not at all. Right? No, it would not have a tail. And the tail, if it did have a tail, it would be pointing away, away from, from the sun. Whatever this closest right. sun was, maybe it was that binary star system that happened to be there. You know that we didn't know oh about. Who God. knows? It's completely nonsense. It's garbage. It's treating space like this homogenous place where there's space stuff and, and, fr- and friction for- and, and, <laughs> and no and, physics apparently. And the thing that really pisses me off about it is because it's clearly directed at kids. You know, like yeah, because, of, because of the way they yeah the way they did it. This is one of those times where someone's watching a TV show where they can learn a little bit about the physics of space and and astronomy and stuff like that. Like. This this is to me a, in a it's a microcosm of the dumbing down yeah. of people in general, and the thing is, the premise of the show and the basic, you know, plot of the show lends itself to just reasonably hard science fiction so well, mm-hmm. you know, right? Because right. It, the, the the they could have had actual challenges where they had to deal with you know the actual physics and. It, it wouldn't be hard. Like yeah. the whole thing could have happened, but just in a way that made sense. Yeah. They could have had right. it happen yeah. in a yeah. way that made sense. They, you know, again, they really needed a scientist there to, to you know, for in the writing and every phase of it to just, g- g- you know, allow them to accomplish their plot goals without completely trashing basic science. But even if know? even if they trash science, and even if like the the budget was crap, and all of that, all right, I could see that. But at least, at least. The writing and the acting was good. <laughs> oh I, I've seen almost the entire se- season. Yeah. I don't like anybody. Not yeah. one person. Some people I'm, I have no real feelings for. Some people I actively don't like, but I don't care about anybody. That's a fail. Bob, That's a huge fail right there. The show pisses me off when I watch. I'm actually angry when I'm watching it. That's how bad it I is. I don't care about anybody. The characters are mostly tropes. You yeah. Know? Yep. Yep. Oh, that's the, the nerdy, you know, geeky girl. Okay. And you know, and that's the tough guy, and the, you know, and this is the the brooding commander. Okay, it's like you know, they're 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 pretty razor thin, and then the villains are like really mustache twisty. Oh villains. god! I mean, I, I think of the characters in Stargate SG One that I loved. All right, mm-hmm. it, granted, it was over seven seasons, but even into the season one of Stargate SG One, I was loving these characters. I, I mean, this is not happening for this mm-hmm. series. I don't know. Are they are they just writing it in their sleep? I'm not sure how the same people produce the same IPs here. Right. So it's a good example of how bad science can make a science fiction story bad, and how good science can make a science fiction story good. You mm-hmm. know, because it, it it really does. It makes it more interesting. It makes it obviously more plausible. You're not like pulling your hair out because of the the abuse of the science. It, it allows you to follow along because there's something that makes sense. Like I can't. Again, I've watched most of the season two, you know, and it's sometimes it's hard to follow the plot because there's no you're not anchored to anything in reality. Right, you're right. not anchored to the to the science. To you know, right. you, you, anything could happen now because they're just ignoring, you know, you know the, the basic uh, um, concepts of space travel. You know, the uh, show can't possibly be doing good. It can't. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? I mean, again, again you, yeah, who knows, even man? if you say, well, their target audience is children, it's like, okay, it's not an excuse. 
It, it, it doesn't it, have one redeeming quality though, like yeah. you said. Like it, it, at least this, you know. But they don't even have they don't have anything. So if you didn't enjoy this show, I don't know. <laughs> we we uh, would love it if you went to our website alphaquadrantandnumber6.com to check out our other episodes that we have, and you could also become a patron at Alpha Quadrant. I'm sorry, at Patreon.com forward slash Alpha Quadrant and the number six. And guys, we'll see you next week. Yeah.